There's one for you guys. Let me cover the screen. <laughs> We're gonna have a test after, so uh, be prepared. Just kidding. Oh man! Just kidding. Y'all ask the scientists to preach today, so. Okay. Okay. Everybody. 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 Oh, everybody have one. Right. Cool. Great. Um, first off, uh, yeah, let's be here. Let's uh, open up in a word of prayer. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, God, once again for this night, uh, for this time we can learn more about you. And I pray, Lord, that you just change our heart, change our mind as we continue to seek you and uh, be molded to uh, what you call us to do and um, to be more like you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cool. So how's everybody doing? Yeah. Good. All right. It's Wednesday. So middle of the week. So um yeah, glad to be here. Um just going uh a little background on me. If you guys know me, I think you all know me by now. Maybe the, the newest person is um maybe Cindy or even Maddie. Where's Maddie? But oh he's working, all right. But um yeah, so background on me just a little bit, if you don't know. Um, yeah, I've been uh, here at church since 2000. Um, I got saved in 2016. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah, 2016, six. Man, I feel a while ago. Yeah, six, 2006, November. And so um, that's when I started serving the Lord and then serving in our church. Um, and, you know, going along with the, the theme of uh, pastor's message and what Tita Grace preached last week and serving, right? Um, I've been serving at this church, and I, I, I call it the Too Many Ministries ministry. So I've been through many ministries, um, serving in dance and, and acts ministry, the sounds team, groups uh, inside. Oh, sheesh. Um, Mama's Boy Special. Uh, served that uh, 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 Penny Lane and did so many things. So I, I just appreciate God for all those opportunities that that I I could say that um, I did because I went at work. I did like a what is called a me in a minute, and so pretty much it was just all the things the ministries that I did throughout my whole lifetime. And um, it's like who who else could say that? And so uh, I praise God, I, I got those time, um, opportunities to serve. And so going along with the theme, um, uh, serving, I think it's one of uh, my passions um, and, and what um, we are all, all called to do, but um, at least for me, uh, it's one that I've dedicated my life to the Lord to. And, and I, I had, um, I want to say, humble beginnings um back then so um everybody have their outlines everybody have their bibles okay so what's even harder to serve um is creating acronyms so um you have this word serve here so we're going to go through all that and um let's let's get into it so if you all agree with me with this statement um say amen um I don't say it. <laughs> so the statement is, I believe that Christians ought to be the best, if not strive, if not strive to be the standard or prime examples for serving. Amen. We ought to be the forefront of serving, right? Examples um, of what service ought to be like. And I know serving is not a really easy thing to do. You know, we you have to give up our time, give up energy. Um, and it's true, you know, around the world, anybody can quote unquote serve, right? People who don't believe in God, people of different religions, and they can serve. But I believe, according to God's word, that Christians are different than those who 
quote unquote serve in the world. Okay, we have a higher calling. Um, I mean, imagine if if Christians were the forefront force. You know that that meme that Ryan always says, "Hey, Philippines, Philippines!" You know, whenever they see a Filipino and on the TV screen, "Hey, Philippines!" They're so proud of it. But if we say, "Hey, Christian!" Hi, Christian. Hi, Christian. Oh, he's, he's over there. <laughs> so, so I hope today that, that we can uh, all uh, dig deeper into, into what service is like. And so let's look at a few verses in the Bible. So um, I put some verses there. If anyone, maybe you can go... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's so open your Bibles in order. Yeah. Yes. So can we start with Abel with Matthew 23, 9 through 12? And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who will exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Nice. So according to the world, what does it mean to be great? And we can tell us something. Status. Power. Riches, money, anything <laughs> else, talent, ego, yeah, all the stuff that is about like the self, right? Um, but according to this verse, so according to Jesus, he says that if any one of us wants to be great, we must serve others. The worldly mindset seeks to feed ego or, or the selves, right? A position of power or leadership ought to be a position of service, not lording over others, but we use our resources to serve others. You guys agree? Amen. So number one, serving others is a selfless service. Okay. Philippians 2, 3 to 4. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Nice. So, what does this verse talk about? It's talking about looking at others' interests than the interests of your, above yourselves, right? So, humility, it does not really mean what we think about, like, oh, it, it's, humility is like being weak. Right, humility in this context it means I'm not thinking of myself. I'm thinking of myself less as less. I'm just thinking of others more. Others needs more than my own needs. I remember um, some uh, where I work at Amgen. Oh, it's being recorded. Um, <laughs> with that. Uh, so uh, I have a coworker, and so. Uh, I know someone starts with the letter. Uh, so one time, uh, I was we were both leaving for work. All of a sudden, my uh, uh, my car had trouble starting. And I know my coworker, he, like we just walked together, you know. And then you know he was in a hurry, so he was about to leave. He had to go somewhere. All of a sudden, he noticed my, me um, like having a hard time starting up my car. And then all of a sudden he comes over, hey, Mikey, you're okay? You know what's going on, man? You good? You good? You know? And they all have a, have a, uh, a hard time uh, you know, starting up my car. So he's, oh, let me, let me help you. Let me jump your car for you. And then, you know, so he did. So um, I know he had to go to another place at, the, at that time. But, uh, you know, he decided to put my need first and help me out. Another instance was when I was coming into work. And then he he saw me and he was like, Mikey, you're all right? I guess I had a, I had a distraught face that morning. I don't know. I was thinking about something. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just, you know, thinking about stuff. He's like, all right, all right, all right. You know? 
And and what surprised me about that is his um he was thinking about me, you know, instead of something else. And sometimes I kind of wonder um that I don't see that often with Christians that we know. And so in this sense, my coworker, he's like a Christian, and yet he was able to put my knees before him, say, hey, Mikey, are you good? And so I, I treat this coworker as a brother, and, you know, uh, we have a good relationship, and we just walk, look out for each, each other. And so um, why can't that be the way we treat our brothers and sisters in the church? To look out for each other when, when without you even saying anything, I can know, hey, something's wrong. When I see you struggle, I can just say, hey, oh, that guy's struggling. Let me help him out without, without question. So in that sense, do nothing of selfish ambition or vacancy. In humility, value others above yourselves. This is the NIV. Did you use the same ver uh, version? Um, NLT. So we look to others' needs more than, than ourselves. That's what it means to be selfless. Number two, serving is an earnest service. Colossians 3, 22 to 30, 23. Yes. Wait. Obey your earthly masters in everything they do. Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. Serve them sincerely with a reverent fear of you. Work willingly at whatever you do to show you the most truly Nice. Ephesians 6 5 through 8. Wait. Oh, no, that's you. <laughs> 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 Thanks, obey your <laughs> and with respect and fear, and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them, not only to give their favor when their eye is on you, but as face of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly, the asking of the church of the Lord not end, since we know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does. Amen. Amen. Cool. So what does it mean to be earnest? It means to be sincere, showing intense conviction. So what these verses, although nowadays we don't have slaves and we don't have masters, <laughs> but we can also consider um you know, our workplace, like our bosses, you know, the places that we that we serve or our relationship with God, right? We serve the Lord. And so whether our service is in a workplace or in ministry at a nine to five job, maybe it's volunteer work. Maybe we perform duties at home. Um, we are called to give a sincere effort as though we were working for the Lord, right? Not a half-hearted effort, but full effort as if the Lord is right there, right? If we look at our, so if we look at our service this past week, has it been to the standard? Selah, selah. Selah. Right? Have we really been giving our, our efforts when we serve? Sincerely. Uh, number three, serving is a rewarded service. Okay. Colossians 3, 25, 23 to 25. Slaves. <laughs> 20. Today. Colossians 3, 23 to 25. <laughs> 
Thanks. Um, and then Matthew 23, 9 through 12. Nice. So we ought to look at the bigger picture. So noting that of these two verses, we will be given an inheritance as though when we when we serve Christ. And whenever we serve or humble ourselves, um will be exalted um, by God, will be honored by God. So we ought to look at the bigger picture, um, not looking at what is temporary, but what is eternal when we serve. I know it's hard when we serve, we want uh, immediate uh, a reward or benefits, recognition. But these verses remind us to look at the glory that awaits us in heaven. God honors us for the acts of service that we do for him. Rewarded, yes. Sometimes when I serve and I know the task that I, that I have in, is like hard, um, at least for me, um, I often remind myself through worship. You know, I remember one time when I was like having a hard time doing this task, I was like, you know, I'm going to put on worship music and then just, just go through it all, you know, and just, you know, so I could focus on this thing because I know that, you know, if I give my best, um, God will be honored in it. I remember when I was working in Temecula, that's what I did. Like, I was just in the lab facing the window outside. I was just sitting and worshiping, um, you know, and, and uh, just waiting for my test to be done. But, um yeah, always remind yourselves to look at the bigger picture, whatever you serve. Number four, serving is a valiant service. That was a hard word to figure out because it's an acronym. I was like, we'll start with V. The how you X34, X. Yes. Psalm 31, 8 through 9. You have not sent with me over to my envy, but have kept me in a state of mercy, Lord, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and soul are withered. Is that right? Oh, wait, hold on. Psalms 31, 8 and 9. Ah, <laughs> listen. Wait, I Did I listen to wrong thing? Yeah. Well, what I have here, okay. <laughs> it might be something different than the Mormon version. Uh oh. So what I have here is speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Oh, Proverbs, sorry. Philippines. Well, I'll read it. <laughs> okay. Proverbs. <laughs> okay, thank you. Amen. There you go. That's the one. So, whenever I leave the house, my mom always tells me, Mikey, don't be a hero. Don't be the hero. If you see someone falling out the cliff, don't be a hero. Just let them fall. And so, I know that sounds kind of grim, but I believe that as Christians, 
we were called to be a hero in some type of way, how I see it. You know why? Because I believe that Christians are the strong ones. We are the strong ones in the world, not because we are strong ourselves, but because we have Christ. We have Christ who gives us the strength to do to do those things, to defend the weak, to reach out to the needy, right? We are the ones who, who is able to do what's right. Um, so we look out for those who are weak, and we ought to be the first to react to the need and do what is right. I mean, maybe I, I watch too much anime or heroic movies, but um, at least for me, the, the, that's a desire that God put in my heart. Maybe it's not like a superhero type of desire, but in the sense that, yeah, maybe if there's a need, Lord, if I could fill it, help me to fill it. Step number five, serving is an enabled service. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. And for I can do everything through Christ to give me strength. I know this this uh one gets said a lot, especially in the MBA, and you know, they put it on their shoes where it says, I can do all things, and then that's it. <laughs> but um <laughs> so that context. But if I look, I, I like the amplified version, so I'm gonna read it to uh, you all right now. So it says, I can do all things for which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Put that on the shoe. So God equips us for what we are called to do. Uh, we, are, are, we are also enabled to do what is the hard thing, right? Not so much as the easy thing. Yeah, you know, God has equipped me to, you know, wipe down that table. <laughs> but yes, that's true. But God also enabled us to do what is hard. And I think we, we shouldn't water down this this verse, you know, just to say, oh, I'm just doing this just to get out of my comfort zone. We are called to do the hard thing regardless of provision or whatever we're called to do in ministry or in life, regardless of provision, even in the face of criticism, even when I'm lacking, even when I'm in front of a big crowd, even when I'm at it alone, even in the midst of grief, or even when I'm facing illness, God has enabled me to do what he called me to do, despite all of that. Cool. And so, cool. So I have, um, that would be it. But, um, sorry to end on a weird note. But uh, with this message, I'm also a man of action. So I do believe we should have application to this. I'm telling you. Um, so let's ask ourselves real quick, maybe give me just five minutes. In what, in what areas can I become a better servant? So let me give you some time to fill in your answer. Question number two. 
which sphere of influences can I serve more? In my workplace, at home, friends, family, all of the above. And last question. Let me look at you. Ten more seconds. And the last question, what is one act of service I'll commit to do this week? Worship team, come up. I was doing Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that last question is is important because you know without all this this knowledge is nothing without putting it into practice. And I remember um, a long time ago, uh, man, when I was younger, I could say that. Uh, when I was a young lad, when I decided to serve God, and you know, in my ministry is. There was always, you know, I always ask the Lord, what is one thing I could do each week so I could serve your people? And it was one of them was even as simple as, look, I'm going to say hi to each person that comes to church. Just to know that they are known and loved. Something as simple as that. And so, serving, it cannot be done without Christ in your life. And so he is the one who enables us all to do what we need to do. So. <laughs> I'll take off. We're not going to do that. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, without Christ, we were not able to serve to that standard. We're not able to pour out as much as we want because we don't have that source of of uh, of strength apart from him. So, yeah, I encourage everyone to continue to serve and uh, get reminded of these verses as we serve together. <laughs> Good job, Mikey. Let me pause the recording. Yes.